Hello, welcome back to Sharks Happen. Today's episode, we're gonna go over a sea disaster. We're gonna go over a woman that was out doing some swimming exercising when she was attacked. Uh, we're also gonna cover a, a story of a shark again passing up on another, even brushed them on the way by to get to another victim. And we're gonna end the show today with what were you thinking? Stick around, it's gonna be a great show. Hey, we're going to start out the show over at Cameo Beach, which is in Maui, Hawaii, and the date November 14th, 2016. Barbara Zawacki, she is 58 years old, and she was out doing some exercises in the water. She was just 30 yards from shore, but she's in 15 feet deep water, and she's doing her exercises. She's floating or she's treading water, one of the two. Uh, suddenly, she says that she was hit out of nowhere. Shark grabbed her by the leg and now she's being propelled because the shark grabbed her leg and is charging at her. She's being forced backwards through the water as the shark bites her. Uh, it immediately releases her and swims off. She tries to swim her way to shore and she can't use her legs. So she's making her way in. When she got close enough, she yelled to other people there was a shark. The lifeguard shut down the beach. They got her in. She ended up with some severe wounds to her lower leg. They ended up sewing that up. It sounds like she survived the attack. They said this was uh, probably a large tiger shark. They don't know what size. So um, that's the attack on Barbara Zawacki. It happened about 10 to 10.30 in the morning. And it sounds like this was a normal activity for her that she does all the time, doesn't have an issue. So this one time she ran into a tiger shark that came up and did what tiger sharks do and bit something. So that's our attack on Barbara Zawacki. An attack, not an attempt to predate by probably a tiger shark. We're not sure and we're not sure of the size. Okay, now we're going to head over off of Stradbrook Island. That is in Queensland, Australia. The date, September 1st, 1974. Adrian Trevalui, he was with his friend, his neighbor, Peter Hodgson, and the two had left the day before at 7 in the morning on August 31st to go out and do some fishing. They were anchored up at 7 in the morning. The next morning, they were September 1st, they're going to pull their anchor. Adrian drives over the anchor to pull it up and when the slack tightened, so the anchor didn't pull up, what it did is grab the boat, spun it around and then dragged the bottom down so the water started coming in. They didn't have time to cut the, they had knives on the boat, but they didn't have time to cut the rope. They just grabbed their life jackets and in the water they went. They started out by trying to stand on their boat. This is, like I said, a 10 foot boat, 11 foot boat. They tried to stand on the boat, but the boat sank from underneath them. So now they're floating in the water and they spent Part of the afternoon, part of the morning, floating through the water, and they would swim when the breakers are going over them. So they're having a tough time, and eventually a shark fin shows up. Shows up and starts swimming around them, swimming in between them. And he tells his friend, he tells Adrian, Peter tells Adrian, you know, you got to watch out that shark's in there. And he said that all that Adrian said was kind of a groan, like a ah, and. He was tugged down a little bit into the water, so it seems like he was bitten. But Peter didn't see any blood in the water. Well, it only took about 10 minutes. Now, this is a five-foot shark that's swimming in between them. They don't, they don't say what type of shark it is. But five-foot shark swimming around them, swimming in between them. When the shark was down by Adrian's leg, Peter went and kicked the shark, and it kind of just moved on its way and they were left floating in the water. But 10 minutes after this incident, the shark showing up, Adrian ends up passing away. And now Peter's trying to hold his head up, hoping that he'll like regain consciousness and be able to take care of himself. To no avail, he, uh, he has passed away in the water and he just drifts off. Peter ends up drifting around for the rest of that day through the night and then the next morning he can see buildings. So he's near paradise something. There's some buildings that he sees. And then there's a chef that works in one of the buildings that pulled him out of the water. Uh, he ends up surviving, but with a nightmare, you know, five foot shark comes up and grabs a hold of his buddy's leg. It sounds like the odd thing is, is that there was no sign of blood in the water, but I don't know what, you know, if this is clear water or not, or what ended up happening. It, 
just an odd, just crazy story. But these are those sea, sea disasters. And when I go through and do my analytics, I take sea disasters out of all the attacks because I don't consider those attacks. You're in the water when you weren't planning on being in the water. What's, what I'm going to be concerned with, with all of the stats on the show, is what happens when you're in the water when you want to be in the water. So that's our attack on Adrian Trevelui, um, a sea disaster, bitten by a five-foot shark. Sounds like he was bitten by a five-foot shark and he passed away from uh, probably bleeding out. And now we're going to head over to Byron Bay, which is also in Australia. The date September 9th, 2014. Paul Wilcox, 50 years old. He is out taking a morning swim. He's got himself about 50 to 60 feet from shore. He's in shallow water, and all of a sudden he's attacked by a shark, 1040 in the morning. 1045, police are notified, but at 1040-ish in the morning, he is attacked by a shark. Real close to shore, and there's a gentleman, Mark Hickey, who is on shore and sees the attack. Sees the shark move off and is going to come back for another run at him, so he swims out and gets a hold of Paul, and he brings him in. It sounds like Paul was only bitten once. He had... Uh, very bad tissue removal from his right thigh and he ended up bleeding out from this wound. Doesn't sound like there was anything that they could do for him when they got him in. You, you lose that much tissue, it's, it's really hard to survive. Um, crazy that that guy would just run out there, especially when he sees that the shark is there. I have seen that they said that there was a 10-foot shark that was spotted from a helicopter, but then I saw a boat, a picture of a boat following a shark, and this one was about seven or eight feet. Great white, both of them are great whites. So probably a great white that got them. I would think that it's a seven or eight footer that went ahead and did that. Um, tissue removal was bad, but it sounds like it was gonna come in and hit him again. Don't know if it did or not. We're gonna put this down as an attack, not an attempt to predate by a a great white shark, we just don't know what size. Okay, now we're going to head over to a reef at Comac, Comac, and that is in New Caledonia, and the date is September 6, 2016. David Jewell, he is 50 years old, and he is on a 10-day vacation. He is on a catamaran on the date, and he is out at the reef, and he is with others, and they're doing some kite surfing. It's about 3.40 in the afternoon and he is kite surfing inside of the reef and he falls into the water and he is severely bitten. The boat seems to have noticed the whole thing, got over to him quickly, got him up out of the water and started to give him first aid, notified the authorities. But sadly, David went into cardiac arrest and there was nothing they could do for him. He ends up passing away. They said this was about a 10 or 11 foot tiger shark that got a hold of him and bit his leg severely and he ends up going into cardiac arrest and you know the shark bite along with that I'm sure that's hard to overcome at any time no matter what they're doing for you even if you're in the hospital I think that's that's some complicating circumstances that it's tough to overcome uh, sadly he is you know really well respected he had a ton of restaurants I believe it was um, the name of them was kind of a strange name but you know folks would tell their kids that you know if they're out doing some skiing or something if you get lost in the woods or something just go to this restaurant and look for DJ which is what they would call David Jewell or it sounds like Mad Maddie I think the name is which I would assume is his wife but uh, it seems like he was a pillar of the community and people looked up to him and people were devastated when he ended up passing away from his attack. We're gonna put this down as an attack, uh, an attempt, not an attempt to predate by a 10 to 11 foot tiger shark. Okay, now we're gonna head over to Shelter Cove. That is in California. The date, August 28th of 2020. David Alexander, he is out doing some kayak fishing. He's in an orange kayak and he's with a acquaintance named John that he met through a message board. Uh, his normal fishing buddies, nobody could make it, so he said, you never go out there fishing alone. So he ends up meeting up with John, and the two of them go out. They leave at 6.30 in the morning, and they're fishing all morning and into the afternoon. Earlier in the day, David said that a whale came straight out of his kayak, and it submerged and went right under his kayak. So much, He was worried that he would accidentally hook it, Good thing he didn't, and the whale just continued on its way. They continue fishing, and he says a half hour later, that whale came zipping by the front of his kayak. So close, he says way closer than they normally do. So it sounds like it almost hit his kayak as this whale went by. Same one he thinks that he saw a half hour earlier. 
So now he's out, they're out there fishing. David's kayak's lifted up in front and he can hear like a scratching, crunching noise. And then he can see the shark's head. He can see the shark's head. He said that he had the tip, the front of the canoe in the shark's mouth and it looked like it was, like it was smoking a cigar. Like the canoe kayak is the, the cigar and the shark is smoking it. Now, as soon as he got a look at the shark, he ended up in the water. So he tumbles into the water at the shark's face. <laughs> so now he says that he's looking at the shark and he can see both the eyes. So he's real close, you know, near the front of the kayak where the shark has it. He can see both the eyes. He says he's looking at the shark's eyes, but he doesn't know if the shark's looking at him. He's thinking his time is finished. The shark, what's it gonna do? It's gonna be done with the kayak. It's gonna come and bite him. So he's sitting there pretty much saying that his life is pretty much done, saying how black those eyes were and how creepy it was. He could see one of them dead right on, but he could see the other one on the other side of the, on the, other side of the head as the shark was biting the front of the kayak. But the shark lets go of the kayak, and he says instead of it going forward, which would send it right into him, it just turned and left. So it made a 180 and left and didn't even bother J David, who's right in front of it. Uh, David ends up he said rescuing himself by climbing back into his kayak. Uh, they get themselves in and he noticed it was a little bit tough to get in. Well, the shark teeth had bitten right through the plastic. It was orange plastic kayak and they had, you could see the scrapes. I mean, it looks like butter, like something cutting butter and the stuff just spreading and, and peeling. And uh, it actually went through there and it was leaking. So, uh, you know, an attack, not an attempt to date, uh, injury to the kayak, none to David, great white shark. David said this was a little guy, about 13 to 15 feet. Okay, we're gonna finish off our unprovoked attacks over at Trenches Beach, which is in Guadalcanal, the Solomon Islands. And the date is February 2nd, 1959. Donald Battier, he is 15 years old. He and his sister are in the shallows and it's five o'clock almost in the evening. And a shark brushes past his sister and it grabs Donald and he's gone. Nobody ever finds a trace of him. Uh, no telling what kind of shark, what size of shark. Just know that it brushed past his sister on the way to him and takes him away. So we got ourselves an attack, a predation and a fatality. We don't know what kind of shark or what size. And we're also gonna have to put in our spreadsheet that it bypassed others as we do. So that's our attack on Donald Battier. And we will get to the end of the show Okay, before we get to the end of the show, what were you thinking? Uh, I wanted to say that I will be in Isla Mirada at the Founders Park Nautical Flea Market. So Founders Park is down in Isla Mirada and they're having a nautical flea market. They have it every year, it's huge. Uh, everything for boats and fishing that you would want there. And now they're gonna have some Shark Attack gear also, some hats and t-shirts. I'll be splitting a booth with my father. He'll be selling his deep drop rigs, Captain Hal's rigs that he sells to all the stores down there. And I will be selling my, my merchandise. Now we will get into what you've been eating, Shark. We're gonna go over to Giovanova, no, Gialanova, Italy. And this is uh, August 6th of 1952. There was a Vittoria Specca, and no telling on his age, but he, he was known for fishing at night. Now it's two in the morning. So it's real early in the morning on this date, and he is standing in the water fishing by lamplight like he likes to do. A shark comes by, a seven foot shark, about two meter. And does he get out of the water? No, does he? Leave the shark alone? No. It says that he start, started trying to wrangle the shark in a heavy loop. So it sounds like this guy's out there and he's got some rope with him and he's trying to lasso the shark. Well, of course, the shark, they say it turned, darted, and bit him. It bit him in his right thigh pretty severely. He screams so that other fishermen heard him and they came over and they helped him get out of the water. He survives the attack. What do you think in trying to lasso a shark? This is the second time, at least the second time we've had somebody in any segment trying to lasso, you know, not these big guys. They do those little guys. Well, lasso this guy. <laughs> oh, as you notice, somebody had mentioned that, that my boy wasn't in the picture. Now he, he's in a more familiar place now, see, my boy Quint. So uh, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I'll see some of you down in Founders Park. Uh, if I don't, there's always next year. And remember, if you go into that water, you are much more afraid of those sharks than they are of you.